Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm here to give you guys my review for WWE NXT for April 24th, 2019. And I'm just going to get right into the show. We had the commentary team of Nigel McGuinness, Maul Ranallo, and Percy Watson. Probably the best, like, three-man commentary team they have going on today. Um, but not probably. It is the best commentary team, three-man commentary team we have going on today. Um, and it kicks right off with the match. It's... Jackson Ryko with Steve Cutler and Wesley Blake inside versus Humberto Carrillo. And I love the way this happened. You know, you had Humberto Carrillo trying to hit all his moves on Jackson Ryko. And even though he would knock him down, like, Jackson Ryko, all that was doing was just pissing him off. So eventually, you know, once Jackson Ryko gets offense and Humberto Carrillo was basically done, he, you know, Jackson Ryko just kicked his ass. He hits the... Widowmaker on him, and that's not enough for Jack and Riker. Um, he throws him out of the wind, he throws him into the god whale, and he throws him, you know, into the fans. Um, and he hits like a running knee, like while he's against the god whale. And eventually, the referee just stops the match. I don't know if it was like a double count out or something, but it was basically a no contest. And Jackson Riker just continues to kill him, to Carrillo until uh, only Lorkin and Danny Birch come out to make the save. They like throw. Jackson Riker, like, into the, uh, back into, like, the actual, like, wind side area, um, and they grab steel chairs to kind of, you know, defend themselves, and the, the Forgotten Sons take off, but I love this, you know, um, you can make the argument that it was stupid that they didn't have a finish, but I kind of think it worked, um, I still think, like, even though they didn't have a finish, it still got Jackson Riker over just being an absolute monster who he doesn't care about the wins. He just wants to beat people up. I actually kind of like that. You don't really see that that much. Um, and it's not like he lost by kicking too much ass. It's just the referee lost control of the match, and you can make an argument that they got, you know, double counted out. And they're using this to set up, you know, a six-man tag team match in the future between Forgotten Sons, Oni Lorcan, uh, Danny Burge, and Umberto Carrillo. So I thought this was a thumbs up. I really enjoyed this. Um, and then Adam Cole is doing a photo shoot backstage and he gets asked, you know, if he's jealous about the fact that, um, Roderick Strong's getting the match with Johnny Gargano instead of him and Adam Cole, no, he actually, he doesn't get asked about that. He gets asked about the main event, but Adam Cole talks about how Johnny Gargano's a coward for not wanting to wrestle him because you'll know that Adam Cole would just beat him again. And he says that Roderick Strong's going to take care of business. And uh, Matt Widow comes up, and he then he says, you know, he's basically jealous that Roderick Strong has the match, and he doesn't. And Adam Cole berates him, and he walks off, and Matt Widow does the pose. And I thought Adam Cole was going to come up and attack him, but that didn't happen. But this kind of set up what was going to happen in the main event later on in the show. So I like this. And I like that NXT, you know, it doesn't just do a typical, like, backstage interview. They kind of find different creative ways of doing it, whether it's someone doing a photo shoot. Um, someone just eaten. So I really like it. I like how NXT does it. It shows that they're creative. And I like this because this is setting up something for later on in the show. And I'm going to talk about it when we get to the main event. And then um, we had a women's tag team match. Uh, Leo and Vanessa Bourne versus Candice LeRae and a mystery partner. And the mystery partner ended up being Casey Catanzaro, which I actually was surprised about. I didn't really expect it to be her. I didn't really know who I expected it to be, but I didn't expect it to be Casey Catanzaro. And they have a match. I thought it was a fine match. I think Aaliyah and Vanessa Bourne are starting to improve as a tag team together. I think they're doing, you know, fairly well. Um, and I thought, you know, Casey Catanzaro and Candice LeRae looked good out there, so I liked it. The heels get the heat for a long time on Casey Catanzaro. Until eventually uh, Candice LeRae gets the hot tag. And she wins with the um, Cambrana, I believe, on Aaliyah for the win. No, actually, it was Vanessa Bourne for the win. Um, and it made sense for Candice LeRae and Casey Catanzaro to win. Um, just because I like them more as a team. And, you know, um, it's a surprise tag team. It typically They typically always win. And if they're setting up a new tag team with Candice LeRae and Casey Catanzaro, they should get the win. Because uh, they did, like, an interview on WWE.com where they say they want to go after the women's tag team titles. So I like this. So, ironically enough, as NXT is doing a better job of building a women's tag team division than the main roster is. And the main roster actually does it more than, the you know, NXT does. So, uh, I'll just show you something right there. And then, Io Shirai gets interviewed, you know, about uh, Kyrie Sane 
being attacked uh, the previous episode. Uh, but, before, you know, she talks about how she's going to make Shayna, Shayna Baszler suffer. But then Shayna Baszler, Jessamyn Duke, and Marina Shafir attack her from behind. And Marina Shafir and Jessamyn Duke, like, you know, hold Io Shirai in place so he, Shayna Baszler can hit the run and knee on her and she just lays out Io Shirai. I like this because this is possibly setting up a, uh, you know, a championship match between um, Io Shirai and Shayna Baszler. Um, either on an episode of NXT or at the next TakeOver whenever they're going to have it. So I liked it. And then we had a video package for Kushida. Um, he, uh, it just shows him signing. Uh, you know, P William Weagle gave his thoughts about what he thinks he's going to be like in NXT. Um, so I liked it. And then William Weagle does an interview um, backstage and says that Kushida is going to make his debut on next week's episode, which was last week's episode. Um, and, uh, you know, he talks about, like, you know, some more about Kushida. And Cassius Ono comes in. And I really like this backstage segment that Weagle and Cassius Ono had together. Cassius Ono talks about how, um, you know, pretty much ever since he's gone over to the NXT UK, he's training the new NXT UK recruits on what it's like to be wrestling and how he's thriving over there versus being in NXT. But he hears all this buzz about Kushida, and he wants to really show Kushida what, how it's done to become like a Japanese high-flying sensation. And, you know, William Regal says we'll possibly talk about that, and he leaves. And then when, you know, he gets asked a question by one of the interviewers, William Regal says that um, he's going to make the match um, official for the next episode, um, Cassius Ono versus Kushida, which um, I think is a good, you know, first opponent for Kushida to have, which is going to be, but it's going to be kind of weird because Kushida's finisher is the Back to the Future. And I don't know if he can, is going to be able to hit that on Cassius Ono because Cassius Ono is really big um, and bigger than Kushida. So I, it's going to be interesting to see if he's going to be able to hit that on him. So uh, I think that will be interesting. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to that match. And I think it makes sense if like if he's going to beat anyone, like an established name, Cassius Ono's the guy to do it with because Cassius Ono can lose as many times and it's really not going to hurt him that much. One, he's nearly not exclusive to NXT anymore, so that will be fine. And Cassius Ono, you know, um, has made his name in the Indies and he's basically in a spot where he's just there to put over the new signees and stuff. So I actually don't really mind it. Um, so, yeah. And like I said, if he, it's a great match. It's not like it's going to really make Cassius Ono look bad, so. Then we had the tag team match on this show. It was the Street Profits versus the War Raiders, and they were the War Raiders on this show. I'm assuming they're just going to be the War Raiders until the next set of tapings happens. Um, and then they'll be called whatever their name's going to be when the tapings happened. Um, but this match was awesome. This was probably my favorite match on the show. Um, you know, the War Raiders are making their entrance, and Montez Ford doesn't even want to wait for the bell to win. He just immediately hits, like, a flip Cambrana, uh right on the outside, right on both members of War Raiders. And I thought that made sense, because uh, if you think about it, in a real, like, tag team match, fair fight, War Raiders would probably kill the Street Profits, so why not get the jump on it? So I thought it made sense, um, and they put Bo in the win, um, and they were actually well enhanced instead of their new names. Um, and, um, uh, um, Angelo Dawkins hits the spine buster and Montez Ford hits an awesome fog splash onto Woe and he doesn't get the win. Um, and eventually, uh, the wall waiters take over when Woe hits a wicked clothesline right onto Montez Ford and they get the heat for a while. But then eventually, uh, Angelo Dawkins lays out, uh, Woe with the right hand. Montez Ford gets the hot tag, um, which I thought was awesome. And he starts to go off on the um, row. He has a really cool standing moonsault on the row, which kind of made me think that really didn't do much to him because, like, Montez Ford's um, not as big, but I still thought it was cool. And eventually the Royal Raiders come in and wreck shop. They hit the, um, the assist, uh, the, like, hip attack in the corner, the springboard heart attack, and eventually they get the win with uh, Fort Minor. Um, which is like that assisted power slam that they have, um, and get the win. And I thought it made sense, obviously, for them to get the win, since of the NXT Tag Team Champions. They shouldn't be losing. But I thought the Street Profits looked really strong in this match. Um, I thought there were points they were actually going to win this match, like the opening portions of it. 
And I don't think this made the Street Profits look weak at all. I don't know if this is setting up that heel, heel turn that we talked about, that I've, you know, been talking about. But I thought it was awesome. I thought this match was great, and I definitely think it's worth checking out. Um, and then Mia Yim gets interviewed backstage, um, and she talks about, um, basically Shayna Baszler running rough shot and says that she's going to be the one to do something about it. So they're probably building up to another match between Shayna Baszler and Mia Yim on an episode of NXT, which will bring Io Shirai in and she'll attack Shayna Baszler. And I was set up their match, maybe a takeover, I'm not sure. But I liked it. Um, it was good. You know, I like that NXT sets up, like, future storylines and everything that happens matters, so. But then we had the main event. It was Johnny Gargano versus Roderick Strong. You could make the argument, like, why didn't Roderick Strong come out with Undisputed Era? You could make the argument maybe Roderick Strong thought he had it all set up because, uh, you know, he's thinks he's this, he's so he's just so great. And you could also make the argument maybe Roderick Strong um, had a plan and, he, and you know, he, he uh, didn't want... Yeah, I really don't know. Maybe William Regal said that they were banned from ringside, but they just came out anyways. So, like I said, that's what I like about NXT is the show's written so well, you can just make all these assumptions on the main roster. You can't make any of these assumptions. So, um, but, uh, yeah, they have a match. Uh, Gargano and Strong exchange roll-ups and wrist holds. Gargano immediately tries to go for the Gargano escape, but Roderick Strong counters into a roll-up. And then Gargano starts to take Roderick Strong to school. He hits a really cool super kick from the apron, which I thought was awesome. And he goes for his, like, roll and dive on the outside. But Roderick Strong catches him, and he hits a, um, a butterfly, like, back suplex into the um, apron. And he really starts to target the back of uh, Johnny Gargano. And, um, he, you know, he hits uh, the backbreaker, and he just really works over the back of Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano... Mounts a comeback, he hits a dive through the um, outside, a rolling dive on the outside, the, sp the uh, slingshot spew into the, um, from the corner, and doesn't get the win off any of those. Um, he goes for the Gagano escape, Roderick Strong reverses again, and he goes for the backbreaker a second time on the eighth way, but Gagano hits the Hurricane like into the steps, um, and then hits the rolling dive again, and... Roderick Strong hits the, when Gagano goes for the slingshot spear a second time, hits a double underhook into a, like a, uh, backbreaker, and then he hits the, another backbreaker into, like, the face buster, but doesn't get the win off of any of those, and then Gagano's about to get the win with the Gagano escape, but then Adam Cole runs out, and, uh, tries to run interference, uh, by calling Johnny Gagano a joke champion, was kind of really... Cuts a cord with Johnny Gargano. Um, Roderick Strawn attacks him from behind. Uh, Matt Widow comes out, and the rest of Undisputed Era run out, and uh, you know Matt Widow starts to take them out. And Matt Adam Cole sucker punches Matt Widow, and he goes to hit an Instagram on Johnny Gargano when when the referee is distracted, but inadvertently hits Roderick Strawn. Gargano um, takes out Cole, and Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano hits the slingshot DDT for the win. Um, and yeah, Adam Cole and Matt Whittle, sorry, no, Johnny Gargano and Matt Whittle stand tall, and afterwards, Undisputed Era kind of get into a little bit of an argument, because obviously, Roderick Strong's pissed that Adam Cole cost on the match, but cooler heads prevail, they just walk backstage nonchalantly together, so, and Gargano did an interview about it, but I forget what he said, but I like this, you know, I actually kind of like the fact that they're going to slowly build to this, um, Undisputed Era, like, breakup. Um, that I've kind of wanted for a while because I've been making, you know, I've been kind of talking about it. It feels like that they're slowly building to it. I am surprised that they're still going to do it considering the fact that, you know, they really don't have a lot of top heroes in NXT. So that would be interesting to see what happens. I'm assuming they're not going to break up the group, but I think they're going to kick one of the members out of the group. And if I had to make a guess, I'm going to say that it's going to be Roderick Strong being kicked out of the group, which... Well, kind of suck because I really didn't like Roderick Strong all that much when he was a baby face. I thought he was just bland. Because um, I think originally he was supposed to be like the top face in NXT and then Gargano got so hot. They just went with Gargano and they just turned Strong heel. But I actually think they, uh, maybe this time it could work, you know, because sometimes what happens in wrestling is someone can just be such a great heel when they turn back to a baby face. They're such great baby faces. So 
maybe that's gonna gonna be what happens. Because I really don't see them turning Adam Cole into a baby face because he's just such a heel that I and just so cocky. I think his gimmick will work better as a heel. Um, and he's the one that kind of started Undisputed Era. But it would be an interesting story to see like Roderick Strong be the one to kick Adam Cole out of the group since um, he lost the NXT North American Championship um, at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, um, I believe, for. Um, and then he got the pin in the fall at War Games. Um, he wasn't in a match at NXT TakeOver, um, not Philadelphia, but uh, Phoenix, and uh, he didn't win the NXT Championship, so it'd be interesting. You really could make the argument for both people to be kicked out of the group, but it seems like that's slowly happening. I could see like a tag team match happening where um, Gargano and Matt Riddle have a match against like Cole and Strawn, or you know, Strawn and O'Reilly, or two members of Undisputed Era. And there's still cracks forming in the Disputed Era, and then maybe at NXT TakeOver. Because um, I hear they're going to do an NXT TakeOver in June, whatever that show will be. They'll uh, have Gargano face Cole again in, for the title, and Cole will fail again because Undisputed Era will cost him the match. Um, and then this will lead to, you know, whoever's going to be kicked out of the group to get kicked out. I, I really think they have something here with Undisputed Era. Um, and then, you know, at um, NXT TakeOver Toronto 2, they can do Adam Cole versus Roderick Strong, um, and they can kind of, you know, mess around with that. So, I actually think um interesting to see this Undisputed Era, like, um, wake up, and I think it's going to be awesome. But that was NXT. I thought it was an awesome show. I thought we had uh, about everything on it had a purpose, made sense. It feels like that the build into future things on shows, which I like, and I thought we had some really good matches. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give this show an A minus. I thought it was awesome, um, and that's pretty much the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you guys like, comment, and share this video so people will watch it. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel for more content and click on the bell so that way every time I upload a video, you guys will get the notifications for it. And make sure you guys do the same thing for my CM Brothers and no one talking to YouTube channels. I should be uploading some videos on the CM Brothers channel. But we'll have to wait and see. But that's for my chick, guys. Talk to you later.